Hello. Welcome back. I'm in Devon. This week, I'm working on Bob. Trying to get Bob into one piece so I can stick him on a trailer and take him home to High Wycombe. I'll finish the project off up there. I'm not moving out of the Devon workshop, but Bob and the new owner for Bob are located much nearer the High Wycombe workshop, so it makes sense to relocate. Um, so this week really is dedicated to that. I hope you enjoy this video. If you like this kind of stuff, give me a thumbs up. It helps the algorithm, as does subscribing. If you don't like it and you cannot turn it off, give me a thumbs down. Comments down below. You need to be on your computer. The comments are down there. <clears throat> if you fancy buying me a pint or supporting the channel, my son says you should stop buying me pints and you should start supporting the channel because it doesn't prevent, present, prevent, doesn't prevent a professional image. Doesn't present a professional. So apparently professionals don't drink. I don't know. Anyway, there's a PayPal me link thing down here, scrolling along. No obligation. You don't get anything for it other than the satisfaction of. But if I've helped you, and you fancy supporting the channel, then please, and I thank every one of you personally, enjoy the video. So when I last left this, I was pulling the door apart. Let me move the welder out of the way. I was pulling the door apart. Um, I've had to chop the uh, A-post, the bottom of the A-post, very, very slightly because uh, it wasn't lining up as beautifully as I wanted it to line up. But as you can see, the door's back on again. I've also welded the B-post into place. This door doesn't open properly because it's not all shimmed up yet. Ah, but it does open, you see. Yeah, and then it closes with a thump. Um, and that is it closed. We're looking along the inside edge, parallel to the sill. The A-post is looking good up against the sill. And you can see I've just tacked the uh, the footwell and the tail end of the sill into place. Um, it's all good enough, really, um, for me, me to be able to relocate the car. Um, I... So you can see we've got pretty good penetration through all of those plug welds. Um, the bit I was really measuring up was because this didn't seem to entirely line up. This, this gap down here, you can see there's a gap there um, and there's not over there. But when I measure from that point outwards and taking into consideration that, um, I've got it absolutely bang on. So it's, it's to the millimeter uh, from there, from that panel to this edge. Um, and I just think there's a tiny bit of whatever distortion in the wheel arch. So the key thing with any of this shit is to make sure, I'm welding from the other side, that the weld goes right the way through. Uh, now, um, some of these welds ain't the prettiest, and I know I'm not renowned for the prettiness of my welding, um, but this, I believe, because I couldn't work out what on earth was going on, this is down to this stuff. Don't like it. It's no good. <sighs> it takes about a week and a half for it to dry. Um, and unfortunately, until it dries, it makes the welds look like there's no gas in it. Anyway, I shall. it's, it's all solid. I shall go over and tidy them up tomorrow when it's all dry. I and mean, there's a really good one. It looks like a really porous weld, but it's not. And there's a better one, but it's got a bit of splash around the outside of it, you see? So I think this is all down to the uh, the zinc primer that I've used there. Right, <sighs> let's get that off. That's good. So that whole piece now, that's that's pretty much that's a quarter of the body frame. That, well, almost a quarter of the body frame because it hasn't got the um, the top window runner on it yet. So I want to get a pair of these made up and mount them on the chassis. You can see I've put the rear crossmember in place. Um, the reason I'm doing this is I don't actually know how much was butchered off the original goalpost. Um, because the, if you remember correctly, that's the uh, the green bogey over there, the big green bogey thing. That's where it was all attached to. Um, and 
I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced that they didn't hack more off. I was thinking about this the other day, actually. I was, oh, good grief. What's happened if they've hacked like two inches off the bottom of the goalpost? Well, then, because of the amount of damage to the goalpost, I will probably start with a complete different goalpost setup and work from that point. Right, let me go and get hold of this bit. I haven't put the body mounts on yet, but that's not too much of a problem because they're more for the cross members than the actual um, piece. The piece I want to butt up here against this edge and sit on top of the cross member. Now, I've already realised I've cocked this up. Oh, something must have slipped. That edge there wants to be the same as here. So I'm about four or five mil out. So I'm irritated already. So I'm going to have to get in there with the Dremel tomorrow and cut these welds through and push it back this way because that line needs needs to line up with this line here if you get my drift um so yeah that irritated me well i've got that sorted out so i had to break the welds off down here uh re-welded it needed a little bit of percussing um to get it into the right location but now i'm confident that this panel is in more or less the right place until I got the other side done, until I got the goalposts on. I won't know how far inboard this piece goes, but I know it is roughly parallel to the chassis here. Um, and this end's easy to line up because you've got a datum point there. The back end, uh, it really is the width of the floor. So perhaps if I drop the floor panel in, uh, there'll be another way of lining it up. Um, yeah, so that's that's done that. I'm happy enough with that now. Um, this curtain piece here, it's never wide enough. So you can see there, all the spot welds that I drilled out um, are still there. So I might butt weld a piece of steel up to this edge here, just so it goes up to the edge of the frame. And then I can plug weld from the inside here. At the moment, it's going to end up being a series of tatty tags. So I'm not going to do anything with this for now. My next job is... Oh, this. The weather's most inclement today, I tell you. Next job is really looking at the driver's side frame. Now, this is just as bad as the work I did on the passenger side frame, but I haven't got time to get the whole thing absolutely pristine. So what I'm going to do is literally work on the back side, <laughs> for now, work on the uh, reverse side of it, the inside edge, and just put a nice big piece of flat steel along here. Um, and then I can screw that onto the sill here so it's it's in place. Get it in place, it's roughly in place. And then that can be unscrewed and I can finish this off when I get back to Wickham. So the, the, the main objective here is to get that back on the car, get the other inner wing on the car, and then tomorrow I'm going to be fiddling around with the goalposts and see if I can get those sorted out. Um, the roof is coming on Saturday. Today is Thursday. Uh, yeah, the B post on this... This one is better than it was on the other side, and the A post is worse. The paradox, eh? Right, let me turn this over. B post. I'm literally just going to cut all this crap out. I might clean up here. This this piece might be savable here, in which case I can leave that in place. Just gives me a face to butt the um, the, the, the footwell up against, um, and then just run butt weld a piece of steel down on this side here. Very similar to what I did on the. Uh, on the other side of the car, probably end up cutting like that. I just weld a flat piece of very thick steel in place to replace this section on here. You can actually buy this entire section. So I think I mentioned before, this is a pain in the ass to reproduce. And as this is largely intact, it's about an inch at the bottom that's knackered, as it's largely intact, and it's all in place. Um, you might think I'm nuts. I probably am. And I think I've said it a few times in this video. Um, but I'm literally just going to try and save as much of this inner face as I possibly can. Uh, this bit, I seem to recall, you can see this bit from inside the car. So this is the reason, again, another reason why I really want to try and keep this looking as nice as is possible. I know you can certainly see this edge here. When you're inside the car and you can see that that is good all the way down to its natural end um right so that's the objective for right now and then i'm going to weld up the other inner wing section i've got a boot floor 
uh, loitering in the container. In fact, I've got a number of boot floors. If you're ever looking at boot floors, by the way, beware. An aluminium boot floor for a four door is about four inches shorter than an aluminium floor for a two door. Um, and it's something to do with the heel board there. The heel board is further back on a four door. Um, it's not that the chassis is shorter, it's the heel board. Right, I'm literally just going to screw this wing. So I'm just going to put drill a couple of four mil holes and put some screws in there just to hold this wing in place. Go around, tighten the bolts up where I possibly can and it's going to stay in. Yeah, it's not going to go anywhere. I think once the roof has a you know, handful of screws around it, holding it in place, it's going to put a lot of rigidity back into this body frame. I'm quite pleased with the way that's all come out, actually, at the back there. Um, it still needs a reasonable amount of work. <laughs> Understatement of the year. But it's fun. I think it's fun. Right, I'm going to crack on with this now. I don't need to video it, but literally just it's just going to be a case of finding a good point on here. It looks like it's good steel to there, so it's probably going to end up being a chop across there. In fact, straight away across there. It may keep this piece in place. Um, and then really I can measure on the driver's side I can measure from there to the bottom of the cell it's going to be down here somewhere and once I've got that large piece of steel in place um, then I can really in fact, what I might do is put the two L sections in because you can see the way this thing's built up that piece there is an L section and this piece here is a box section and on the inside here, you can see there's a big reinforcing piece here. I don't want to box all this crap in yet because I don't know quite where it's going to go. But obviously, bits like this are no good to man nor beast. It is interesting on this side how the B post is tidier than it was on the other side. And the A post is just is absolutely devastated. That should be enough in order to get me secure this onto the sill just drill a hole through that screw it straight onto the sill done don't need to weld it on yet because i'm going to finish this panel off first of all i've got the makings of a a curve here so what i really need to do is work out where the bottom edge needs to go to and i can cut this down and literally just box it in piece of piss that so that's 99.999 percent of the way there i might even do that today this side um, i started picking it apart and this huge great piece of angle iron that was welded to the outside here, I'm not entirely sure I understand why it was welded on. Um, I can only think that because this edge had rotted along here, rather than just welding a little bit of angle iron along there and onto, they decided to go absolutely fucking berserk. Because it looks like that underneath. <laughs> Typical, isn't it? Literally just cuts through the metal. I mean, the weld, all the pigeon snot is along there. And up here um, so I don't know really I mean this will need replacing now because it's kind of been boxed in and not painted um, it might clean up I might just be a case then of cutting this piece out here and replacing that um, the other side and I'll t just tip it over because I'll show you why I kind of did that when I was looking in here the inside face of this post does not actually look that bad really just this bottom edge down here. Now, what I do find really interesting is the piece of metal that got welded on is in far worse shape than the bit of metal that they welded over the top of. Um, I don't know what that was, but uh, it's rotted out again. Anyway, go and scrap that. Um, so, really, I just need to make up a piece of metal now to go in here um, and go down to wherever it needs to go to down here somewhere. Let's put a nice flat piece of steel in there. Um, and then I can I can work on the rest of it at a later point. Uh, yes, moves forwards. Uh, now I did actually have there it is because I've obviously got the piece that I cut out. It gives me a rough idea of the template I'm going to need to work with. Yeah, so it gives me a rough idea, and then I can just butt weld that back on again. <coughs> right, that's had the desired effect. Bolted it to the bulkhead and screwed it onto the sill panel. It's rock solid. In fact, it's only because I haven't screwed the heel board on that side, but that side's moving around. A similar stunt down here. So you can see where I've just screwed it on. I've chopped off the bottom part of this because I don't actually need it. In fact, what I need to do really is cut this up here and then put a, a curved section 
while underneath it but you can see that all fits nicely right next do that for this side it's a step closer <laughs> I say it a lot <sighs> I think it was the uh, the wisdom of Desmond Tutu who observed once there is only one way to eat an elephant and that is one bite at the time I'm saying this car's an elephant but you just have to attack the project just a chunk at the time you look how nice that rear inner wing looks yes I've got some panels over here that I need to salvage so I need to salvage the depot off that because um, I need to understand how the um, the roof section splices in between so really what I'm going to need to do here is probably chop like that and like along here um, and then really just attach that onto the tail end of the inner wing driver's side um, rear inner wing all new parts DDS <coughs> very good transport paint all over the bloody place but like I say I've just grind the transport paint off uh, where I'm welding um, and then the whole side frame is going to get grip blasted before it ends up with any paint anywhere near it I could buy it without the transport company, but I'll make it easier. Now, um, what I tend to do with these after I've ground all of the, uh, the crap off, oh my goodness, after I've ground all the crap off, there's a few dents and bangs on it. It's not the end of the world. Don't care about fix that. I'm going to take all the paint off around here, both sides. In fact, no, I'm just going to do the inside edge, the, the, the edge that meets up with the wheel arch. I'm going to do all around here, and then all around here. Then I can weld that onto there. And it goes a little bit like that. Um, they're not. The best thing you can get really, there's quite a lot of distortion in this area around here. Back all you can do about it. I'm not going to worry about this. Part of the character of it, yeah? That the pressing puts distortion here. I suppose if you were absolutely determined to do a 100 point restoration, then you would be knocking all of these bits of distortion, shrinking these areas down. Um, but for this one, not really a problem. Um, you can see distortion on both corners. I call it a signature of me restoring one of these cars efficiently. I mean, when the carpet's all over the top of it, you're never going to see it anyway. Um, and then this is the curtain piece. So the curtain piece will go along here like that. Okay. Like that. And again, get that in roughly the right sort of place and then weld that on. It all sort of lines up. I'm happy back with it. Right. So, I'm going to have to get busy with Mr. Prep Room. So I'll put you on a bit of a time lapse. Prep Wheels, they're all right actually, Prep Wheels. Um, the only problem is, they do tend to redistribute the powder and the, and the paint all over the place. So, that's a Prep Wheel. Uh, this one I've been using the edges on it, but normally you just kind of lay it flat on the surface. Um, and it does quite good. At, it's very good at getting paint off, especially this transport paint. It's the most efficient way I've found yet of getting transport paint off. I've tried the wire brush. I've tried the wire cut. I've tried the flat wheel, which is far too abusive, far too abrasive. Because that flat bit starts to eat into the steel. You don't want that, really. This is all clean, new steel. Um, right, time lapse. <laughs> edges up. 
up. You see, it's quite a lot of dust and shite as a result of that exercise. Um, <laughs> get all the crap out of the way, really. Um, and then I'm going to weld the floor and the arm together. Now, because these panels are pressed, they are not always a simple fix. Let me just go through. Oh, there's a reminder of my outside. I'll scrap it. Let's get the first one. I don't need the curtain just yet. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> right, the curtain can go over you. Very dusty. Now, in here so what I really want to do is clamp it here on the return bit and over here and then I weld those two bits first uh, once that's all clamped in place I'm fairly comfortable Ooh, uh, once I've clamped that in place it's all kind of roughly where I need it to be uh, the problem is it, it sits like that but as soon as you try and move anything it all springs apart again when you look in here you can see that that edge there uh, needs dressing back slightly because it's putting tension on the arch so I could do that in a second with a pair of pliers this side less so but I want to get this gap as tight as I possibly can around here without putting weld over the top if we look at the one I did earlier <laughs> in true blue Peter style we end up with a gap like that okay it's not absolutely perfect, but I'll tell you what, it's better than it was when I did the, uh, the white 1972 car um, from learning. Like I say, first area to weld is that and that to pull it in as tight as I possibly can. So let me uh, get myself set up. I shall clamp it into place and we'll see if we can uh, get it where we want it. now. Oh. C clamp is probably the most useful thing I've got here, uh, but I don't think the C clamp will actually fit into the gap there. Um, I've also got one of those clamps that you can use. This one, I need another one of these because this fella, unfortunately, is just it's just plain worn out. I've used it so much, it's all twisted and bent and everything. Never mind. Uh, giant deep throat clamp. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. Um, and that. Clamp. Put some more clamps in there. Right there. Oh, yeah. Furniture clamps. Furniture clamps are always useful. F clamps. F because they look like a letter F. And you slide it up to where you want it to go, and then you just do the nut up. And because this pivots on here it locks into place they're very good f clamps i've also got a bigger f clamp but it's not quite so useful on this because it's uh, quite a thin lip anyone get my cautious lip reference the other day uh, I bet you it's a blondie track oh yes when blondie were really good 
Right, just, we just twist that around a little bit. It's all going to get clamped tight anyway before I uh, the rain's coming again. That's better. Still got a gap here, but I can't do anything about that. So it'll end up once it's been epoxy primed. It's going to end up with a very, very thick coating of um, epoxy primer and then a seam sealer. And this is springs apart and nothing sits where it should do and it just all becomes an utter ballsy. So, a mixture of G-clamps and C-clamps and stuff, it does actually go together. Now this fella here is really useful. This is the problem I've got, it, it broke so I kind of had to. And then the nut on the back is, and it's all, oh I don't know, poor old thing. It's been properly abused over the years. It does have a habit of just springing over. Right, that's actually not too bad there. Um, so, what we've got, this edge here, along here, I'm just going to put a few tacks along that, and that, and that, and that. And the flat area that I really want to be working with is keeping that edge there, and that edge as close as I possibly can worry about this bit in a minute so you can see there that's good all the way along there that's good don't worry about gaps in it at the moment the idea is to get the wheel arch pressed in so I'm not holding it in the wrong direction the, wheel, the, 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 the objective here is to get the wheel arch actually welded to the side floor and then what I'm going to do I have drilled a world of holes around the inside of the arch which you saw me do last night, and I'm just going to turn this whole thing over and plug weld every single one of those. Plug weld the shit out of it. Right, let's get it set up with the Mr. Welder, and I'll put you on time lapse. Okay, that's the arch welded to the floor and now I'm going to line up the curtain so it takes a fair bit of effort to get this thing lined up because again what we're looking to do here is sort of compress the arch a little bit so it lines up here and it lines up here and it all fits now quick interlude yesterday I was doing an oil change on on Claire at the pubs Freelander 2 T4 um, and uh, I noticed after starting it, it wasn't very clean revving. You ready? Have you ever seen an air filter look that disgusting? <laughs> look, fucking look at it. I reckon if I set fire to that, I'd have to get Red Adair out. Because that ain't going to go out for a week. <laughs> it's a bloody tenner and it takes like a minute to put in. God's sake. Anyway, so I've got a new air filtering for her. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Anyway, I'm going to burn that later on. Shits and giggles. Now, <clears throat> when it comes to this thing here, what we've basically got, this is the, this is where the seat would go, the seat box and so forth. So the trick is I need to make sure that this top edge is straight. I don't want this thing bowing in any way whatsoever. I want to make sure the bottom edge is straight. So that edge along there needs to be straight. This needs to be straight, that needs to be straight, and it all needs to line up, which is what I'm messing around with these clamps for. Now, on the inside, we've got kind of got a lip along here, um, and I try and get it as close to that as I possibly can. It's not far out. Um, probably just wants to go in a tiny bit there, but I can do that when I when I actually get come to weld that corner. This piece here just needs to come out like that. And I think that's just because there's a dent on the panel somewhere. So again, once that's in place, I shall do that. Now I've just noticed I've not cleaned back the, the uh, transport paint on that corner, so I need to do that before I weld. Um, then it's just a case of plugging each of these welds. Under here, you can see where I've plugged the welds. I still need to grind them back. Um, but you just drill a, I don't know, whatever size hole that is, about six mil, I reckon, 
four or six mil that's a, that's probably a five six mil whatever um just drill a nice big hole weld it make sure you get really good penetration for now um so <laughs> this paint burns beautifully um and i think that's what's been causing my so partly the weld through primer but when i get a fire on the paint what it does then the fumes from the paint pollutes the weld which is why i've taken quite a lot of the paint off this time so whatever this paint is when it burns um it's fucking up the weld because obviously you're going through all this aggravation of making sure you've got a nice argon co mix um and uh cup co2 sorry mix and then you're mixing that with whatever is coming out of this and it's it's creating what looks like a porous world but isn't a porous world so yeah when it when it catches fire i have to put it out and then continue welding so you can hear the weather's picked up but it is what middle of december 11th of december mm -hmm. 